Postman is one of the world's most popular API clients. And regardless if you're a QA engineer and as that or a developer, you will work with the Postman one day. And on today's video, I'm going to quickly explain to you what Postman is. I'll explain the basic interface of the Postman, how you can send an API request with the Postman and verify it as the QA engineer, how to send files with the Postman. And finally, I'll show you the basics of the test automation with the Postman. I will not dig deeply, you don't have to have any coding skills or knowledge. I'll show you the basics and then if you will enjoy it, you can proceed with learning JavaScript. But before I get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I am a founder of the Comify Bootcamp that helps people to become a QAs or SDS from scratch or to improve your existing skills. All right, now it is time to hit the like button below to subscribe to our channel and get started. First of all, let's download and install Postman. So Google Postman and click download Postman page. Then choose whichever Mac, uh, let's see, whichever Mac chip you have or Windows. I do know that I have an Apple chip, but just in case, I'll show you where to get it. You click the Apple icon on the top, system settings, then general, and then you will see it in the about section right here, Apple M1 which means this is an Apple chip. So we're gonna download the Postman. Great, the Postman has been downloaded. Now let's open it up. Perfect, I'm going to double click the Postman icon and it should, let's see, is an app downloaded from the internet? Are you sure you want to open it? I am sure I wanna open it. It might look different on your screen when you are using Windows, but generally it should look like this. So whenever you're installing Postman for the first time, it, depending on the version, it might look a little bit different. So, but the main goal is you need to create an account if you don't have one. So you would click create account button and you would create one. I'm going to click sign in since I do already have an account in order to sign in into the Postman. So please do so. Okay, I do have one and I can simply click on login with my Postman account. Open a Postman app. Perfect. The Postman has been, I, actually I was logged in into the Postman app. As I mentioned guys, if you register for the first time, simply go through the registration steps and then log in. You will see, then you'll see exactly the same window as I can see. And we're choosing the workspace. Actually, we're going to be using my workspace. It's a default one, but I, I do not have any local data. So I'm simply going to skip this tab and start from scratch. Great. So this is a Postman user interface. So first of all, let's start with a collection. So on the left side, we'll see collections folder. Pretty much here, you can create a new collection. And for our purposes, we're just gonna call it a test collection of APIs. You can think about it as a folder which will contain many API requests. Now let's get back to the browser and find some free APIs that we can use for our testing purposes. Now I'm gonna navigate to Google and say free public APIs. Great, you can see a lot of lists of those, but I think there was a really good list that in a dev community, dev.2. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to pick one of the APIs. Let's see, random data API. I like this one. Let's get some random data. And here we can simply click on get started. It's free. Perfect. Now we scroll down and you guys are gonna see the documentation. So I'm going to quickly show you a basic example and then I'll walk you through the documentation so you can read it as the professional. So I'm going to copy the base URI, navigate to the Postman, hit add, request and I'm going to paste it right here. So this is the base URI. Now let's scroll down and see uh, what examples we have here. Cannabis, that's the one. Let's get some API about a cannabis. Let's send it. The page you're looking for doesn't exist. Did I make a mistake? Let's double check it. API v2 cannabis. API v2 cannabis. Let's copy the full URL. Maybe there was a difference. There was not. Okay, so this one doesn't work. That might be the might, that might be the broken one. Let's just get the users. I think this one will be easy. So instead of the cannabis, we're gonna say users and send it. Awesome. We have received our response right here. Now let's stop for a second and talk more about what else do we see here. So on the left side of the 
middle of the screen, you will see get. Get is one of the types of requests in, uh, in API. If you are familiar with API, you should already know that there are a lot of different types of APIs, but here are most common one. If you're not familiar with API, please learn the basics of the API and then come back to us later. So we're sending the get request and the get is one of the types of the API request that you can set in order to receive the data. Pretty much we're sending requests to the server saying that, hey, this, uh, hey server, can you send us all of the users that we have? And you can see that we have some users information right here. And the, form, the response format is a JSON. And we are seeing it in a, in a pretty format. There are a couple of ways to see it. One, oops, that was accidentally click, do not save. One is the pretty. That's the one that I would highly recommend you guys to use because you will see the most beautiful way of seeing data. Second way is a raw data. That's a little bit more for people with experience. Uh, also, you can see the preview. This is quite different. I wouldn't recommend using it unless you know what you do. And visualize looks like you have to work uh, some extra in order to set the visualize. But pretty is the best way. By the way, looks like after navigating and uh, to the right and back to, back to pretty, it's actually it actually had beautified the request. So now you can see everything the way it's supposed to be. It's pretty. You can see keys and values, ID of the user. Then you can see the password, the first name, the last name, etc. Whenever you are testing APIs, first thing that you have to verify is is that the data comes back in the correct response in a way it's supposed to get back and usually you will see the requirements that will specify how exactly it should be returned great aside of this you would have to verify the status code 200 as you can see is okay so that means that whenever you're sending get request if there are no issues, you should be getting 200. If you're getting something else, please make sure that it is specified in requirements that you should be getting the request, the response code that you are getting at the moment. And you can also verify the time it takes. 75 milliseconds, it is very fast and it is okay. Usually you will also know from your project manager or from the requirements, how long it should take to get the response. Are you sure you've hit that like button below and subscribe to our channel? Make sure to do so while you're enjoying this video. Awesome. Now let's talk about the actual URI that we have right here. So as you have seen on the main website that we have a base URL. Usually base URL for the regular user would be just a google.com or random API data.com. Since it is an API server, we're saying that slash API specifies that we're using API and V2 is the version of the AI, API, is the base URI. This is pretty much a, the base URL for the API server. But what happens after? What do we add after? After we add the path. So pretty much we're saying, hey, this server, can you please give us all of the users that you have on a website? And there are different paths. In this case, they're specified as resources. We can get addresses, we can get banks, we can get beers. You know what? Let's actually check out the beers. Oops. I'm gonna type in beers and hit the enter. Perfect. There are a lot of different types. Oh, actually there's only one, one type of beer. Either way, let's continue. So that's what you usually are going to see. The URI and a path. Also, you can add query parameters. If we're gonna say, for example, test, and then some value you're gonna see the question mark here and then something equals to something those are called query parameters where you have to specify maybe it's just a random one a beer type and we're gonna say light for example this is a query parameter so then if you would have thousands of beers you would get only light beer and those query parameters are usually specified by the developers. Whenever they're creating the server, whenever they're setting up an API, they will specify that you can or you cannot use certain types of the query parameters. Awesome. Now let's talk about authorization. So in authorization, there are different types. You can see no auth, basic auth, beer token, etc. There are many different types as you can see. The main idea is that Whenever you are utilizing not a public website, but maybe a private API, such as whenever you are logging in, you have to specify your passcode or a password. In the same way, whenever you're sending an API, you have to specify the token, which will say that, oh, this is the person, this is Sergi, because I know this unique token, just like a unique password on a website. 
And in this case, it is a public API, so I'm not showing you any of those. In headers, header can also specify a lot of different key value pairs. In our case, if there are seven of them are hidden. And the postman adding those by default. This is pretty much a, an information that is getting sent together with your request. And you can specify a lot of different... So by default, we have seven uh, which were hidden. I'm going to hide them. And here you can, also, you can also specify a lot of different key value pairs or headers. Uh, an example of it would be what server should be accepting, such as languages, encoding, authorization, cache, a lot of them. But one thing that you have to know, your developer will specify what do you have to send in headers. Body. In a body, we usually specify the data that we are sending to the server. And that data can have a different type. So first of all, in the, in the GET request, we would almost never send anybody. Most of the time, it would be POST, PUT, or PATCH. If you specify POST, you will see that you can, in the same way as you can do it with a GET, but mostly you won't do it with a GET. You can specify the key value pairs, but here it is called the form data. And I usually go with a RAW and a JSON, because this is the same format that you get your response with. So, for example, if you want to create a new user, you would put a curly braces here and say, for example, the name, Sergi, and age. And we're going to say young. Awesome. And then you would simply send it. But in our case, we're only working with the GET request with the server that is provided to us as an example for this video. Awesome. And for the other, uh, there are different types of the body, such as binary, GraphQL, etc. And with either one of them, you can go even deeper and specify different formats. But we will not dig into it as this is the only basic explanation of the Postman. Great. Now let me show you how to send files through the Postman. So you would have to use form data and you would specify your key. Let's say it's going to be an image, but your developer will let you know. And then you'll simply have to choose instead of the text, the file, and then click here and then you can choose new file from the local machine. You hit it, you choose the file, and then you would send it. As easy as that. Awesome. Now it is a time to talk about automation or uh, test automation for the Postman. So I'm going to send this request more, one more time, get the response, and I'll explain to you guys the very basics of the test automation for the Postman. So number one, you would have to know JavaScript programming language to deeply work with it. At the beginning, you don't have to really know it. I will explain you the very base. So you can see a lot of snippets. And honestly, I respect devs of the Postman and the entire Postman team for the job that they did. Because they have added so many code snippets right here. And the easiest one to use is the status code. Let's say that every time we send an API request, we have to verify the status code, right? So I'm going to click on this snippet and you will see the code popping up right here. And this code will pretty be human readable with some extra characters. Let me walk you through every single line of this code. So PM stands for the postman. We're saying postman dot please test or postman, this is a single test. And then in the parentheses, we have data right here in a text format with the double quotes. And this is pretty much a name of our test case, just like you would specify in a test case management system. Then we have a comma and then function. So this is the part of the JavaScript classic function, uh, which you don't have to learn right now. And on a second line, we are pretty much specifying what we have to do in this test. And in this automated test, we're asking PM or Postman that we're saying that response to have status 200. So if the response status is 200, this test will pass. If the response status is not 200, it will fail. So let's run our test. We're going to navigate right here. Actually, uh, next to our collection name, we're going to click on the triple dot and we're going to run this collection. Actually, before we do that, we have to save the changes. You saw there was a dot right here before I, I click the save. And if I'm going to put a space right here, you'll see that this has not been saved and you have to press the save button to save request. Awesome. Now triple dot right here, run the collection. And it asks us if uh, it asks us to run it manually or schedule a run. 
and we're going to run it manually just for the testing purposes. And you can see that we have a one new request right here, and we're going to run it. Perfect, it says pass 200. That means our automated task has passed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it fail. So now I'm going to say that we should be expecting 900 status code, which doesn't even exist. I'm going to save it, come back to the test collection, and I'm going to run it again. Boom, fail, status code is 200. Assertion error. Expect a response to have a status 900, but got 200. Perfect, we did make our test fail the way we want it to fail. And now you know that you can easily automate verification of the API status codes. And you can do a lot more right here in the snippets section or test scripts section. I'm not going to go very deeply here. I showed you guys the basics. This should be way enough for you to get started and just to understand if you are going to be enjoying it. These were the very basics of the Postman. If you guys are interested in learning more, please leave a comment below and let me know and I will record a much longer video with the details that you want to hear about the Postman. Otherwise, if you're interested in learning more about a QA or automation or Postman automation itself, or you would simply like to talk to me, feel free to use this QR code to navigate to the contact us page at Comnify.com and give me a call or just schedule a free consultation. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you next time.